Hi, everybody. Um, today we're going to be talking about pH indicators. Um, this is Polly. Say hello, Polly. Um, she's joining us for a little bit today, or maybe, oops, maybe not. Um, so if you're one of my chemistry students, that means that you should be getting out your acids and bases packet and also your reference table. We're going to be using page 13 in that packet. It has a big Roman numeral three up at the top. It says acid base indicators. So what is an acid base indicator? Well, it's something that can tell you the pH of a substance, and it can do that in a broad general way, or it can do that in a very accurate and precise way. So there's different tools that are used at different times. Um, one example of a really accurate and precise pH indicator would be a pH meter. pH meter is a device you can put into a solution to test its pH. It'll give you a digital readout. Um, it might tell you not just that something is a pH of 5, but that it's 5.52. It's a very accurate tool. Um, another type of pH indicator we can use is pH paper or other um, chemical indicators. Um, pH paper can give you an idea of the pH, but it's not that precise. It can say maybe you're 7 or you're 6 or you're 3, but it's not going to give you the same um, values of information that a pH meter would give. Um, most of your common indicators that we are going to be using in Regents Chemistry are found on table M in your reference table, and we'll be looking at that just a little bit later. So what is an indicator? Well, this is an example of an indicator, litmus paper. Litmus paper comes in two forms. So litmus paper comes in red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. And you can see they're red and they're blue. So how does that matter? Well, blue litmus paper, like what you see in the picture with the lemon there, um, if you put that into an acid, it will turn red. But if you put that blue litmus paper into a base, it's going to stay blue. On the other hand, red litmus paper, if you put it in an acid, nothing really happens. It just stays red. But if you put it in a base, it will turn blue. So um, in addition, I've got some rice wine vinegar here. I'm going to be making a salad with this later. But I thought it would be a good way to show you the difference between red and blue litmus paper. Now, normally, I, we were doing this in the lab. Um, you would have gloves on, not because the litmus paper is dangerous, because it's not, but um, because you don't want to contaminate it. But here, our results are going to be pretty clear, so I'm not going to um, be using gloves or tweezers or anything like that. So I've got my red litmus paper, and I've got my blue litmus paper and my vinegar. I'm going to just try to get a little bit of that in the cap of the container and I'm going to touch my blue litmus paper and I don't know if you can see that but it's turned pink and here is my pink litmus paper and it has stayed pink. No big difference there. Alrighty. Now there's another type of paper we can use to test things, and that is pH paper. Now pH paper is a little bit different. Okay, so if you had pH paper and you tested something that was a pH of 1, you would get this pinkish color. If you went down and you tested something that was a very strong base, you start trending toward purple. Now I also purchased some pH paper. And when you open it up, you've got like a little booklet of the test papers and you also have a key. And that key um, tells you the different pHs of your substances. So I'm going to tear off a little piece of the pH paper and I'm going to touch it to a little bit of that vinegar. There's not much left in the cap, so I've got to do that again. And there we go. That's what I got when I touched the pH paper to the vinegar. And I'm going to match that back to my color table. And I would say that somewhere around a four might even be a three. Okay, so that is a way that we can use pH paper to get a much more accurate 
view of what the pH is, but still not as precise as a pH meter. Alrighty, Ooh, I've got all these little bits of pH paper on my table now. Alrighty, so let's talk about um, some different pHs of common substances that we might test with pH paper. So I might test something like ammonia, it comes out very basic to a pH of 11. You can see there it's blue. And as we trend down toward things that are more acidic, like lemon juice, we end up with um, moving in more into that red range. Now, these aren't the only indicators. There are lots of chemical indicators out there. And these are some of the ones that are listed on table M. And these are the ones that are going to be really important to you um, in Regents Chemistry. So um, this just lists a few, methyl orange, methyl red, bromothymol blue, neutral red, phenethylene. You'll see for all of these, other than phenethylene, it has a color. And let me explain how these indicators work. So you see these numbers in the middle of this methyl red area, okay? These two numbers, 3.1 and 4.4. Those numbers don't tell me what it tests for. Those numbers tell me the range where the color starts to change. So if we are below 3.1, that means that methyl orange will be red. If we're above 4.4, that means that methyl orange will be yellow. And if we're between 3.1 and 4.4, it's going to be shifting from the red to the yellow. And I'm really hoping you remember your elementary school art. If you mix red paint and yellow paint, what color paint do you get? That's right, you get orange, okay? So that means it would be orange in that 3.1 to 4.4 range, but it's not like, boom, you are orange. No, it's going to be a gradual shift from red to yellow. And so you're gonna start with like a reddish orange and then you're gonna end up with like an orangey yellow until you get into that yellow transition. So that's the, what all these numbers mean. So methyl red, for example, transitions between 4.4 and 6.2. So once again, you'd have orange in that range. Bromothymol blue, on the other hand, starts out yellow down in that acid range. When you get to 6.2, it starts to change. And when you're above 6.7, it will be blue. So what color would it be in between 6.2 and 7.6? be green. All right. So you see how that works. So let's do a problem together. Let's look at example five. Identify two indicators from reference table M that would both be yellow in solutions with a pH of 5.5. I'm going to give you a moment. I want you to try to answer it. Okay. Well, let's look at table M. So if we want two solutions that were, or sorry, two indicators, it would be yellow at 5.5. We need to look down our table and see what we've got. So we could look at methyl orange. It's got yellow somewhere. Bromothymol blue, it also has yellow. Phenethylene won't do us any good because it never is yellow. Um, litmus also, red and blue, no yellow there. But we do have brome cresol green and thymol blue. And those are both possibilities. So let's see which ones work. So we're looking for yellow at 5.5. So would methyl orange be yellow at 5.5? Well, yes, it would. Because above 4.4, it's going to be yellow. What about bromothymol blue? Well, it shifts from yellow to blue. Below 6.0, it's yellow. So 5.5? Yeah, bromothymol blue is gonna be yellow. Phenethylene and litmus, we already said we can skip. Let's look at brome cresol green. Below 3.8, it's yellow. Above 5.4, it's blue, which means in between, it would be green. So will brome cresol green be yellow in a pH of 5.5? Nope, it won't. It would be yellow, it have to be lower than 3.8. So brome cresol green will not work for one of our answers here. And let's look at thymol blue. Thymol blue is yellow below 8.0 and blue above 9.6. Once again, these names of the colors on the left are going to be the color it will be before the lowest number and the numbers on the right will be what they will have above the highest number, okay? So this has to be yellow below 8.0, so yep, 5.5. Would it be yellow? 
Yes, it would. All right, so let's look at another example problem. Example six. The list below shows the color of two indicators, methyl orange and litmus, in two samples of the same solution. And we look and we get our results, indicator color result from the indicator test. Methyl orange is yellow, litmus is red. So we want to know what pH would methyl orange be yellow and litmus would be red. So let's take a look at table M. So we're looking at methyl orange right here, and we're looking at litmus. So we want to know where would methyl orange be yellow? So would methyl orange be yellow at our first pH, pH of 1? Nope, because it's red below this. Would methyl orange be yellow at a pH of 3? Nope. At 3, it hasn't yet begun its shift because it begins its shift at 3.1. What about a pH of 5? Well, yeah, it would definitely be yellow at 5 because at 4.4, it's completed its shift and it's totally yellow. And what about 10? Well, if 5.5 if is going to be yellow, then, or sorry, if 4 is going to be yellow, then 10 will be as well because it's above 4.4. Um, so we have, we're narrowing it down to choice two and choice four. So let's look at our litmus. So we want the litmus to be red. Litmus is only red below 4.5. So our closest answer is going to be choice two because it will be just beginning its shift from red to blue. Choice one doesn't work for methyl orange. Choice three doesn't work for methyl orange. Choice two is our closest answer. Choice four, a pH of 10, well, that would definitely be blue for litmus. So that one won't work at all. All right. So there's all these different indicators here. I wanted to show you all the color shifts that they can go through. And I wanted to show that blending of colors. All right. Um, here's another example. Litmus goes from red to blue in between it's kind of a, a peachy color bromothymol blue starts from yellow to blue in between it's going to be green phenothaline starts colorless and ends up bright pink this is going to be important to us later in between it's kind of a peach phenol red starts yellow ends red in between we've got orange okay it's basic like fifth grade art color theory so we have all these different indicators. You can see all the different color shifts that we can go through. There are lots of other pH indicators as well, not just the ones on table M. And each of them go through their shift at a different pH range. So you could use different combinations of indicators to get a very accurate idea of what the pH of a substance is. Um, some of these we will never use in lab because they're carcinogenous or they're dangerous or they're highly corrosive. Um, the ones that we tend to use in, in high school lab classes um, tend to be the ones that are less caustic, less dangerous, less toxic. Um, there are lots of foods out there actually that are also acid-base indicators. And if you have any of these in your kitchen, you totally owe yourself to go and try. Um, one of the best ones is red cabbage. If you have some red cabbage at home and you take a red cabbage leaf, you chop it up, you put it in some water, you cook it, don't boil it, but cook it for about 15 minutes and then strain out the water. That's what you want to keep. You're going to get this purpley colored water. It will change color um, almost as like accurately as universal indicator. Um, all of these different fruits and vegetables will change color in different pHs. It's pretty cool. In fact, here's that red cabbage. Down here in a pH of two, it's pink. And as we range up toward our bases in that higher pH levels, we end up going all the way to greenish or greenish yellow. So um, you can actually have some fun with your food with pH. If you're cooking red cabbage, you can change the color of it um, by adding vinegar to it to make it more acidic, or you can add baking soda and that'll make it more basic. So you, know, you can have a little fun in the kitchen. So that's what we're leaving off with indicators for today. And on our next video, we will pick up with the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases.